Hebrews 6, 19. <clears throat> the Bible says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter it into that within the veil. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for traveling mercy. We thank you, God. Father God, we can stand and we can have victory in Jesus Christ every moment of every day of our lives. And Father, we pray that you'll hide me behind the cross. God, I'm not worthy to stand here. Thank you, Lord, for your great man's servant to allow me to stand here behind his pulpit, Lord. Where the great man of God has proclaimed your word. And this morning, I ask, oh God, that you are blessed in a mighty and special way. Touch somebody. Lives, help them to realize that our hope is in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we ask, we'll give you all the glory. Amen. You may take a seat this morning. We have a hope. Amen. That is what I'd like to talk about uh, this morning. Uh, what a comfort of soul in these days that we have a hope. And that our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is an anchor which holds us fast and keeps us from drifting. It steadies us and fixes us in the faith. It prevents us from drifting into false doctrine of devil and demons. Everyone needs a hope and an anchor. The question this morning, is your hope an anchor in Jesus Christ? Is your hope in Him? And is our life anchored in Him? Amen. Without Jesus Christ, we are nothing, folks. You take out Jesus Christ from this world, what this world will become? He is the light of the world. Is not so. Amen. He sustained this world. The Bible said that He created this world. Amen. Number one, I want to uh, share about five or six things. Number one, our hope is in Christ. The Bible says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Amen. Uh, it's good to have hope in this life. Amen. Uh, uh, and continue trusting the Lord and so on. But our hope is not uh, temporal. Our hope is permanent. Amen. Amen. Our hope is, is permanent. It's eternal. From the moment someone accepts Jesus Christ as Savior, your hope becomes permanent. Because you have a place in heaven. The Bible says that we are already seated in, in heavenly places in Christ. But who is this Christ? To the world, he might be just a, a prophet. Amen? To the world, he might be, be ju just a preacher or something. But who is this Jesus Christ to us this morning? Amen? May I say he's the Alpha and Omega? He is the beginning and the ending. Amen? Uh, John said, Behold, uh, uh, Jesus Christ said to John, Behold, I am he that liveth and was dead. And I am alive and, uh, uh, and have the keys of hell and death. Amen. Who is this Jesus Christ? Amen. I uh, have the ABC here of Jesus Christ. A to the astronomer. He is a bright and morning star. And he is a son of righteousness. Revelation 22, 16. B... To the baker, he is the bread of life. John 6, 35. C, to the carpenter, he is the door and the nail. Amen. John 10, 7. And uh, D, to the doctor, he is the great physician. Amen. He is the doctor of doctors. Amen. He is the great physician. Luke 4, 23. Amen. To the electrician, uh, he is the light of the world. Amen. Think about all, amen, the lights that you can put on in the night, amen. And when the sun arises in the morning, all those lights get dim, amen. 
Let me tell you, when Jesus come into our life, everything else that we hooked on and trust in will become dim. Amen? Because he, he become the central of attraction in our life. Can somebody say amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. F to the fisherman, he's the calmer of the sea. Amen? Uh, Matthew 8, 26. Amen? Um, G to the geologist, he's a rock of ages. Can somebody say amen? Isaiah 28, 6. 16, amen. H to the historian, he is the ancients of days. Daniel said, Daniel 7, 9, uh, beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, amen. Praise the Lord. I to the industrialist, amen. He is the faithful servant, amen. In Matthew 20 and verse 28, uh, uh, and J to the jeweler, he is a precious stone. First Peter 2 8. Amen. K to the king. He is a crown and scepter. L to the laborer. He is the burden bearer. This morning, the Bible is saying, First Peter 5, uh, 5 7. Cast your cares upon him, for he cared for you. May I say, He is a burden bearer this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. M to the musician. He is a horn of salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Uh, and to the news reporter. He is good news. Amen. Good tidings of great joy. Amen. To the news reporter. Hey, you might have uh, heard bad news all over this world. Amen. Uh, everywhere you go, you will find some or hear some bad news. But praise the Lord and shame on the devil. There's good news in here. Amen. Because Jesus is still King of Kings. He is still Lord of Lords. Amen. And though He is the Creator, listen, He can live in your heart this morning. And He's coming back again for us. Amen. Our hope. Amen. We have a hope this morning. Amen. Church. Praise the Lord. Uh, to, to the Oculus, he's the light of the eyes. Amen. To the publisher, he is the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, uh, Hebrews 12 uh, uh, and verse 2. The Bible says, looking unto uh, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Um, uh, to the questioner, he is the answer to every question. To the rancher, he is the owner of cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, Psalm 50 and verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. Amen. Amen. To the soldier. He is a captain. Amen. Amen. Job 5.15. Amen. Praise the Lord. To the teacher. He is an example. What an example. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can follow him. Because he is a perfect example. Amen. Amen. This morning I'm so thankful that I'm not following Muhammad or one of those guys. Amen. Who is dead and their bones rot. Amen. And probably and they are in hell. Amen. But I'm following this morning Jesus Christ. Amen. He is a resurrection and a life. Amen. And he is coming back again. Not as a lamb. Amen. But he is coming back as a lion. Amen. This morning. With great power. And those that accept him will be with him. Amen. If you are saved this morning. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Amen. Listen. You will be with the king of kings and lord of Lord, amen. He can come back any moment from now, folks. Amen. amen. Listen, uh, we ought to do our best to Jesus Christ. You know one of the sad things when Jesus returned? Whatever you possess here will remain for the use of the Antichrist. That is why we ought to surrender our all to Jesus Christ. Amen, folks, this morning. Praise the Lord and take the gospel to the world, whatever cost it might be. Amen. Uh, to the united, one, united ones, he is our peace. Amen. Ephesians 2.14, for he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Amen. To the warrior, he is a shield. To the zoologist, zoologist he is a lion of the tribe of Judah. Hey. Jesus is our hope. Our hope is Christ. 
Amen, this morning. And then secondly, our hope is a lively hope. Amen. Amen. Our hope is not a dead hope. First uh, Peter 5, 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead. Our hope is a lively hope this morning. Why you think the disciples, boy, they were willing to give up their lives, their very lives, because they know who Jesus Christ was. Think about the apostles, amen. They even faced death and did not deny Jesus Christ. Because our hope is a lively hope. Amen. Then thirdly, our hope is a gladdening hope. Amen. And the Bible says in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 10, 28, uh, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. This morning, if you are saved, amen, in the eyes of God, you are righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be that is called justification. God sees you, amen, that your past, present, and future, there is no sin. All he sees is justification. He sees you forgiven because of the shed blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, uh, you know, totally our hope is a gladdening hope, amen. And Proverbs 10, 28, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Hey, that is something we should, we should be happy Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ said, you know, don't be afraid of them who kill this body. Amen. Don't be afraid of them who kill this body. You know, there, there's a lot of things in, in, in this life that uh, because, maybe because of certain food, amen, or certain chemicals, that's why sickness infests our bodies. Do you know that? Amen. But we have a lot to be glad about. And fourthly, our hope is a rejoicing hope. Amen. Uh, uh, Romans 5, 2. The Bible says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, when we stand and rejoice, and rejoice in hope for the glory of God. Paul told the Philippians in Phil Philippians 4.4 4, Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. We used to sing that song in Sunday school. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and again I say rejoice. Hey, you lost it all, rejoice. And everything rejoice. Because the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. You might lose your job, your finances. Hey, you might even lose a spouse, amen, or a friend. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Because your God is your hope. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he said he will never leave you nor forsake you this morning. Amen, church. Rejoice. Then fifthly, our hope is a is abounding hope. The word abounding means to overflow. And that is what the psalmist said. Amen. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This has to be something that is determined in our heart. Yes, I'm saved, amen. But I need to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. No matter what comes my way. Hey, the house of the Lord is a place of refuge. Amen. Our hope is abounding hope. Then, our hope, sixthly, our hope is Christ. The Bible says, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope 
on the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord and shame on the devil. Amen. Our hope is Christ this morning. Hey, we have this hope. Amen. Everyone need that hope. Amen. God give that hope to us. But we ought not. Amen. To, to put that hope in a box. Amen. That hope need to go beyond these walls. Can somebody say amen? That, that hope need to go beyond the walls of our very home. Amen. That hope need to be propelled out there. And you and I are God's personnel to propel the hope. Can somebody say amen? That's why when Jesus Christ, he came to his disciples. Amen. And he said to them, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Our very lives preach the gospel. Do you know that? Amen. Whether we are on vacation, whether we are at work, amen, or in school, we ought to propel this hope. Amen. Because without that hope, souls are going to die and go to hell without that hope, folks. You remember the day when someone came to you and shared that hope with you? And then you accept the Lord as your Savior. Then what do you do with that hope? You know, the devil team thought he won the battle after Jesus was crucified. And he said, you know what, that hope is sealed. That hope is sealed. In the tomb. But up from the grave he arose. Amen. With a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose. He arose. Hey. What are we doing with this hope folks? The world needs this hope. That is why a church exists. That is why you and I exist. Many people think to themselves the job is only for the pastor and the leaders of the church and for the missionary and for the evangelist but this, this job this task is for every Christian if you are a businessman business person this hope is for you to propel because God placed you in a position that you can afford to propel the hope are right, listening? If you are working with a company, amen, you're a normal worker, this hope is for you to propel. Amen. But sometimes, because of, of our limitations, the devil keeps bringing back the past. Amen. The devil keeps bringing back our limitation. And sometimes we take for granted. Uh, not propelling the hope. Amen. Not uh, share the word of God. Hey, we, this, this is urgency. We ought to propel the hope. The Bible says go and compel them. Amen. Hey, we ought to go to every sinner out there. And say, you know what? Hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. Put all your effort. Bring them to the house of God. Hey man, propel the hope. This is urgency. Without this hope, souls are going to die and go to hell. Had not this hope reached Guyana 1998, I probably would have been on my way to hell. Hey Amen. Praise the Lord that the hope came my way. What is your excuse this morning? The next time you feel like you can't, that God can't use you. Just remember these things. Noah was a drunk and God used him. Abraham was old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. They said Leah was ugly. God used her. Amen. Sorry to put it that way. That is how I have it here. Amen. Joseph was abused and thrown into prison. God resurrected him, amen. He became the prime minister. 
and the savior of his generation. Moses had a stuttering problem. Moses said, oh God, who am I to go and speak to, to this Pharaoh? I'm not so eloquent, amen. And, and you know what? Uh, uh, God said, I will give you Aaron as a spokesman. And they went down to Egypt and I didn't saw where, you know, Aaron did much speaking. I think when you take the fourth step of obedience, God will do the rest. Gideon was afraid and God used him. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. God used these people when they turn over their life to God. Amen. Rahab, she was a prostitute in the walls of Jericho. Amen. Leading people the wrong way. But when the two witnesses uh, get a hold of her, amen, uh, her direction was changed. Uh, and now she was leading millions, amen, as a beacon, amen, to the promised land. Can somebody say amen? God can use anyone in here to propel that hope this day. Jeremiah and Timothy, they were young. Uh, and God had to tell Jeremiah and Jeremiah 1, 5, Hey, before I, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and sanctified thee a prophet. Amen. David had an affair and he was a murderer. When the two times after David's death, God was going to wipe out the entire nation of Israel. But God said, because of my servant David... I will not do this thing. Amen. David was a man after God's own heart. Elijah was suicidal. He just preached up a storm, amen, against a false prophet. But he was running from Jezebel and wanted to commit suicide. Yet God used him. Isaiah, they put him out there and they stripped him naked. And he got up and preached anyway, amen. You talk about some limitation there. Jonah ran, ran from God. It is said you can run, but you can't hide from God. Amen. Amen. Think about Naomi. She was a widow. Job went bankrupt. He lose everything. Didn't God raise him up and use him again? Uh, where he, God, through the inspiration of God, the book of Job was penned. Amen. What will your life what will be written about your life in eternity? Do you know your life? You know, there are angels writing down what you are doing. And how, how will that be? Can God use you? Yes, he can. Amen. Uh, John the Baptist, he didn't have the best diet. It is said historically that he ate bugs. Amen. Peter denied Christ. Amen. Amen. But think about the day of Pentecost. Amen. Uh, he returned to God. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. You know the story with uh, Mary Magdalene and so on. Amen. And boy, uh, Zacchaeus was so small. He was too short. Uh, Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer problem. Lazarus was dead. This morning, hey, we have a hope, hey man. And what are we doing with that hope? What is your excuse today? Look at the people that God used in the Bible, hey amen. And God want to use every one of his uh, children, hey amen. Every child of God, God want to use from the smallest to the greatest, hey amen. To propel this hope. You know, your preacher need your helping hand to propel this hope. I want to tell a little story. There was this preacher heard about uh, somewhere in the Philippines, amen. And he had this little church. Sorry, this great church. Uh, about 400 people attend the church. But right where the church was built... Not far off, just a couple feet, there was a pasture, pasture with uh, rice that they grow rice. And it was about four feet deep with water, and rice was growing there. Amen. That is how they grow rice in, in uh, swamps. And uh, 
He had a little daughter. His daughter slipped out of the service unknown to anyone. And they didn't miss, miss her until the end of the service. And then they searched all over and couldn't find her. Then one man from the church stood up and said, Let's join hands together and comb these rice fields. It was about 200 acres. And boy, they start 400 men, women, amen, a children join hands, start combing that field. That is how the story goes. And as they comb the field, just about two minutes away, they found that girl, but she was dead. The preacher said, thank you for your help, but it's too late. She already dead. Amen. May I say something? That had they did that, earlier probably that child lives would have been saved. The spiritual application of that is that God needs you to join hands because there are dying souls out there. Everyone out of Jesus Christ is already on their way to hell. But if we join hands together, amen, no matter, put away our differences and put Jesus as a central of attraction in our life, we can comb these fields out there, amen, and bring men and women and children to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? amen. It is said that the work of God will not be built on spare time and pocket changes. It will cost us something. Salvation is free. Amen. By Jesus. But now as we have it, and to propel it will cause us some effort and time. Can somebody say amen? There's an next story. I want to say this morning that this was a fisherman. He took about 12 of his friends, went out a fishing, out in the sea, and a storm came. And when that storm came, it hit the small fishing boat, and the boat began to sink. After a while, everyone was being so terrified about facing their death. A big ship passed by, but the ship couldn't go so close to the boat because of the, the ship will sink the small boat. And the man that took his friends to fishing, he jumped out of that little boat and start to swim to that big ship. And when he arrived at that big ship, hey man, someone from the ship, a sailor, threw a life ring and pulled him up. And he arrived, he was so joyful, he said, now you, you guys, I, I put all effort to come to this place, to this ship here of safety. Y'all guys out there need to make your own choice and come here now. But then for a moment as he walked away, Something smote him and he said, you know what? I can swim. I am here. Those guys are different. They don't know how to swim. And he quickly ran back to, that, uh, uh, to the stern of that ship and started throwing out that life ring and pulling his friends them one by one. And what, what a great application of that story. Amen. Sometimes we, we are in church, that is so good, that is in obedience to the Lord. But we think sometimes that those people need to get to church. Those people need to stop sinning. Those people need to change. Amen. But listen, we ought to throw that lifeline and rescue the perishing and care for the dying. They will not come. They must be brought. They will not seek. They must be sought. They will not learn. They must be taught. Fellow believers and brethren, we have a hope this morning. And that hope can change lives. It can change country. It can change the world. Are we involved? Whatever God bless you with, whether it's money, time, talent, Surrender all to God. Let me tell you this and I'll quit. The world's philosophy, the lost man philosophy is 
get how much he can, can how much he get, sit on the can and poison the rest. But God's people philosophy is different. Look at Acts chapter 2, what they did. Whatever they possessed, the Bible said they parted among themselves, and it was for the furtherance of the gospel. They changed the world upside down with the gospel back then, the Bible say. May God help us this morning. Let's bow our head, close our eyes. Father God, we thank you, Lord, today that you is our hope. Use our rock, use our shield, use our refuge, use our savior. May you help us, O oh Father God, to propel this hope to those that don't have a hope. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.